Welcome. Today we are solving systems of equations by graphing. Uh, now the first little thing that we're going to do is not actually any graphing, but I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable with this because you're going to see this on your homework. And that is, tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the system of linear equations. So the way you go about that is you take the x and the y and you plug it in, like I'm going to do it above and I'm going to do below for this one. So 2 plus 6, and is that true? Is 2 plus 6 8? Yes it is. Now we have to test it in both. It has to be a yes in both, true in both, for it to work. 3 times 2 minus 6 equals 0. So 6 minus 6 equals 0. Is that true? Yes it is. So that's the process for testing a point, whether we're working with graphing, linear combination, uh, or substitution. So give these two a try, test them out, see if they work, and if they do, great. If they don't, say no. It's a yes or no question. Uh, it has to be true for both. So go ahead and uh, pause it, try these, and then unpause to see the result. All right, so I'm going to plug this in. Um, 3 for y has to equal negative 7 times negative 1 plus, uh, minus, excuse me, minus 4. So negative 7 times 1 is positive 7 minus 4. Does that equal 3? Yeah, it does. Now we'll try this one. 3 has to equal 8 times negative 1 plus 5, 3 equal negative 8 plus 5. Does that work? Nope. So therefore, the answer to this one is no. Not a solution. Because this one didn't work, it gave me negative 3. And 3 does not equal negative 3. Let's try down below here. Negative 2, 1. 6 times negative 2 plus 5 times 1 has to equal negative 7. I'm, I'm running out of room here. I probably should have given myself a little room. Let's do that. Let's give ourselves a little more room here. All right. Negative 12 plus 5 has to equal negative 7. Does negative 12 plus 5 equal negative 7? Yeah, it does. Let's try it on the bottom. 2 times negative 2 oops, minus 4 times 1 has to equal negative 8. Well, this is positive 4. No, sorry, negative 4. Minus 4, negative 8. Sure, negative 4 minus 4 does equal negative 8. So this is yes. That is the solution. The top one was not. All right, let's try. Try looking at a graph and see if you can find the solution. So when I look at a graph like this, I can see the intersection of these two points is right here. And the intersection of the two lines that are crossing here, that is a solution of the system of equations. Because this equation and this equation, they're graphed here. And where those two lines cross is your solution of that system. Now, we've studied these systems earlier this week, and this is the graphing. So the x value is negative 3. The y value also happens to be negative 3. So negative 3, negative 3 is my solution. Maybe I should put that up here as well. I'll uh, just put that up here so we can see it a little better without the lines getting in the way. If I look at this one over here, the solution is here, and that solution is at 1, negative 1. So uh, that is your answer. Negative 3, negative 3, 1, negative 1. All right, let's take a look at you trying those two. Uh, see how they work out. After you're done, unpause it and see what the result is. Alright, so in this first one, 
the solution is at negative 1, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4. Now, what's interesting is when you get x equals a number, that's a vertical line. If it were y equals a number, it's going to be a horizontal line. Well, in this case, that intersection is at negative 4, 4. Right up here. All right. Here's our next example. We have already in y equals mx plus b form, which is always nice, an equation, a pair of equations. So I'll do this one in blue, and I'll do the next one in red so that we can see where they intersect. Now, hopefully you recall that when we graph something in this form, we first find its y-intercept, positive 2 in this case, and so on the y-axis, we go up 2, because it's positive 2, we put a dot. From that dot, I'm going to count out the slope of 1 over 3. The top number is the up-down movement, the bottom number is the left-right movement. Remember, positive movement up, positive movement to the right. So in this case, up 1 to the right, 1, 2, 3. Again, repeat that, up 1, right, 1, 2, 3. That's enough, I can draw my line. I'll make a nice line here. And it's crucial that when you draw these lines, you use a straight edge because you need it to be precise. If your line is off a little bit, then where you have your answer is not necessarily correct. Now see, my line is slightly off because it should be hitting, let's see, one, two, three. It should be hitting right at that intersection. So I'm just slightly off. There we go, oh, that's close enough. All right, so now we're gonna do the red line. Positive five is the y intercept, one, two, three, four, three, four, five. And then I go up two to the right three. Up two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Now remember, it also works in reverse. So if you're going up two to the right three, you could go down two and back one, two, three. Down two, one, two, three. Down two, one, two. Oh, look at that. Nice solution. Now let me graph this. And there's my line and the two lines. Oops, it's a little off. Two lines cross right there. And that solution in this case is at the point negative 9, negative 1. And that's how you do it. We're going to try another type of problem. Now this one is a little bit different. These are in standard form, so we need to rewrite them so that they're in slope-intercept form to make it easier for us to graph. Now it's not required that you do that. There are other methods that we haven't really talked about much um, that you could use to find the x and the y-intercepts, um, but on these, I'm just going to have us rewrite them in slope-intercept form. All right, so I'm going to subtract the x variable from both sides, or add the opposite of the x variable to both sides, negative 4y equals negative x. Notice I put that before the number, minus 4. And I put it before the number so that I can have it in my y equals mx plus b form when I'm done. Now I'm going to divide everything on both sides by the coefficient of the y term. In this case, negative 4. Negative 1 divided by negative 4 is a positive 1 fourth x. Notice I put the x to the side. And negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1. So there's my first equation. Down here, my second equation, I'm going to, again, add the opposite of the x term to both sides. And 
I'm going to put it before the number. So negative 4y equals 3x plus 12. And then I'm going to divide everything by the coefficient of the y term. Coincidentally, is also negative 4. Don't think that was intentional. Or it always happens that way. So I have 3 over negative 4, or negative 3 fourths, x, minus 3. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. So now I'm going to graph these two. I'll graph them green for the green one, up 1. And every time I go up 1 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's enough for me to draw my line. My line's going to start here and just continue on. That's correct. Now I'm going to graph the other one down 3. 1, 2, 3. Every time I go down 3, because it's a negative 3 fourths, it doesn't matter whether the negative is on the bottom or on top, you choose. I could go up 3 and back 1, 2, 3, 4. Ooh, looks like that's a good choice. Or I could go down 1, 2, 3 and forward 1, 2, 3, 4. See how they're on the same line? So now I'm going to draw my line here. Come on. There we go. And my line, actually I'll probably do that. And my line's going to go right through here. And I like to draw my line so it gets to the edge of the box that I've got here going. And this time, my answer is here at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. Negative 4, 0. Because it doesn't go up or down any. That's why it's 0. But negative 4, 0. You give this one a try, and as soon as you're done, unpause, and you can see if you got it right. All right. In this first equation, I am going to plot the y-intercept up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And every time I go, now, slope here is negative 1. So that's like negative 1 over 1. Every time I go down one to the right one. I can do that all day long. All right, draw that line. Start here. Next, I'm going to graph 1 for y-intercept. And then my slope here is 1, so that's like 1 over 1. Every time I go up 1, right 1. So now I'm going like this. Oops, it helps if you hit the exact spot. Um, all right, we'll graph that. All right. And my answer here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4. x is 3, y is 4. All right, here's our next one. Remember, rewrite it, then graph. Go ahead. All right, hopefully you've paused it, and now I'm unpausing to graph it. So subtract 9x is the add the opposite of your x squared of your x term. And then divide everything on both sides by the coefficient of y. y equals negative 3x minus 1. Down the bottom here, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Negative y equals negative 2x minus 4. And then I am going to divide everything by a negative 1. y equals 2x plus 4. All right, so let's graph this. Start with this one, down 1, 
and then up, sorry, down three. One, two, three, to the right one. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. I can draw my line. Good, pretty close. Again, you want to be sure you're accurate. You should go right through that point, so it's just a hair off. Now it's better. And then up four. One, two, three, four. And then every time I go up two to the right one. Now, that didn't actually intersect from my dots, but it will intersect when I draw my line. Starts here and goes down through. And you can see the intersection is right here at negative one, two. That's how you do it. All right, your homework will be in Google Classroom. Make sure you have some graph paper to work with. And good luck in that snowstorm. Have a great day.